ولقد يسرنا القرآن للذكر فهل من مدكر Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the new video tutorial of Book 1. This is part 2 of Lesson 8. Today we will start with the text at the beginning of the lesson. Let's go ahead and read it paying attention to the new concepts we learned in the last video. This man is a trader and that man is a doctor. Can you help me identify the badals in these two ismiya sentences? Arrojulu, right? The first arrojulu is the badal for hada. The second arrojulu is the badal for dalika. Next, ismu tajiri mahmudun, wasmu tabibi saidun. The name of the trader is Mahmud and the name of the doctor is Saeed. Can you find badal in these two sentences? There is actually no badal here, right? Ismu is the mubtada wa huwa mudaf and at-tajri is mudaf ilayh and mahmudun is the khabar of the first sentence and the structure of the second sentence is the same as the first one Next هذا البيت للتاجري وذلك البيت للطبيب This house belongs to the trader and that house belongs to the doctor Which word is badal here? Al-baytu is the badal in both sentences they are badal for the asma'ul isharah coming before them. Next, Baytu tajri amam al masjidi wa baytu tabibi khalf al madrasati. The house of the trader is in front of the masjid, and the house of the doctor is behind the school. If you remember, we briefly talked about amama in lesson 5 and part 3. We learned that the word amama means the front, and now we are learning khalfa, which is the opposite of amama. So khalfa means behind. Both amama and khalfa are ism type words, and because they indicate the place, we refer to these combinations amama al masjidi and khalfa al madrasati to be dharf and mudaf ilayh. Remember, dharf is always mansub, that is why these ism amama and khalfa are ending with fatha. Now, can you identify the mubtada of the first ismiya sentence here? Baytu is the mubtada, wa huwa mudaf, and the ism at tajri is the mudaf ilayh. How about the khabar? The khabar here is the ism amama. If you remember, we call this khabar to be khabar shibu jumla because it is dwarf. And again, al masjidi is the mudaf ilayh. The structure of the second ismiya sentence is same as the first sentence. In particular, ism khalfa is the khabar shibu jumla that is because it is coming as dwarf, which is mansub ism, indicating a place. Okay, moving on. It looks like the next sentence is a question. لمن هذه السيارة ولمن تلك Whose is this car and whose is that? Here the ism السيارة is coming as badal for هذه. Then the answer is هذه السيارة للطبيب وتلك للتاجر This car belongs to the doctor and that belongs to the trader. The only badal here is the ism السيارة. And the last sentence. هذه السيارة من اليابان وتلك من أمريكا. This car is from Japan and that is from America. Recall from the last video that the ism أمريكا ends with alif, and that alif constrains it from taking kasra ending even when coming as majrur after harf jar. That is why we see here that the ism اليابان is ending normally with kasra in majrur case after the harf min, but أمريكا remains as أمريكا even after the same harf. That was the end of the text, but let me go back and read the whole text once again, this time with no interruptions or explanations. You try to listen and understand what I'm reading, okay? هَذَا الرَّجُلُ تَاجِرٌ وَذَلِكَ الرَّجُلُ طَبِيبٌ اسْمُ التَّاجِرِ مَحْمُودٌ وَاسْمُ الطَّبِيبِ سَعِيدٌ هَذَا الْبَيْتُ لِلتَّاجِرِ وَذَلِكَ الْبَيْتُ لِلطَّبِيبِ بيت التاجر أمام المسجد وبيت الطبيب خلف المدرسة لمن هذه السيارة ولمن تلك هذه السيارة للطبيب وتلك للتاجر هذه السيارة من اليابان وتلك من أمريكا
Next, we have exercise 1. In this exercise, we need to answer the questions related to the text we just read. As always, feel free to pause the video if you'd like to try to answer them on your own first. The first question is, من هذا الرجل ومن ذلك الرجل? The question is asking, who is this man and who is that man? We'll find the answer in the first sentence of the text. So the answer will be, هذا الرجل تاجر وذلك الرجل طبيب. The next question is, ما اسم التاجر? What is the name of the trader? His name was Mahmoud. So the answer will be, اسم التاجر محمود. Question number three. ما اسم الطبيب? What is the name of the doctor? Based on the text, his name is Saeed. So our response should be, اسم الطبيب سعيد. The next question. من أين سيارة الطبيب? Where is the doctor's car from? We find the answer in this part of the text. هذه السيارة, referring to the doctor's car, من الياباني. So we answer the question as سيارة الطبيب من الياباني. Or if you want to use ضمير instead, we simply say هي من الياباني. It is from Japan. هي من الياباني. Question number five. من أين سيارة التاجر? Where is the trader's car from? It was from America, so we write هي من أمريكا. Next two questions are about their houses. Question six is أين بيت التاجر? Where is the trader's house? We find the answer here in the text. It was أمام المسجد, in front of the masjid. So we respond to this question as بيت التاجر أمام المسجد. But if you want to use ضمير instead, should we use هي or هو here? We should use هو, right? Because البيت is مذكر. So our response will be هو أمام المسجد. The ضمير هو is referring to البيت here. The final question is أين بيت الطبيب? Where is the house of the doctor? The doctor's house was behind the school, so we can say هو خلف المدرسة. All done with this exercise, we already went over the next two exercises in the last video. So we will flip to pages 44 and 45 for exercise number 4 now. Here we need to read the mithal or the example and come up with similar questions and answers. It looks like the mithal is about al-kitabu because of the picture here. The question is, لمن هذا الكتاب? Whose is this book? And the answer is based on the hint given in the parenthesis. Which is Muhammadun. So the answer is هذا الكتاب لمحمد. This book belongs to Muhammad. Based on this مثال, what we need to do is use the object given in the picture and ask whose is this object and construct answers to the questions using the hint provided in the parenthesis. We can see part one is about قلمun. Our question should be whose is this pen? How do we ask it in Arabic? لمن هذا القلم؟ In the parenthesis, we see the name عباس. So we should say this pen belongs to عباس. So the answer should be هذا القلم لعباس. This pen belongs to عباس. Part 2 is about مفتاح. What will be the question now? لمن هذا المفتاح؟ And the answer is هذا المفتاح لعلي. Because we are given the name علي in the hint. Part 3. We should ask about السيارة. What will be our question this time? لمن هذه السيارة? Whose is this car? Notice I'm using مؤنث اسم الإشارة. That is because we're asking about مؤنث اسم السيارة. We've got المدير given in the hint. So what would be your answer? هذه السيارة للمدير. This car belongs to the principal. So here هذه is the مبتدى. السيارة is the بدل for هذه and للمدير is the خبر شبه جملة. Notice we are not analyzing all these sentences because they are all similar in structure. Part 4 is about البقرة another مؤنث اسم. So we should ask whose is this cow? In Arabic it will be لمن هذه البقرة? 
and we see al fallah written in the parentheses. So how should we answer then? هذه البقرة للفلاح. This cow belongs to the farmer. Very good. Part five. What is this in the picture? It is al haqibatu, right? So we will ask لمن هذه الحقيبتو? Whose is this bag? The ism in the parenthesis is al mudarrisu. So how would you answer the question? هذه الحقيبة للمدرس. This bag belongs to the teacher. هذه الحقيبة للمدرس. Very nice. Part six. We have al kursiyu in the picture. So the question will be لمن هذا الكرسي? Whose is this chair? And the answer should be هذا الكرسي لعمار. This chair belongs to Ammar. Part 7 is about الدجاجة. How should we ask our question for this one? لمن هذه الدجاجة? Whose is this chicken? And the hint in the parenthesis is بنت الفلاح. So we should answer it as هذه الدجاجة لبنت الفلاح. This chicken belongs to the daughter of the farmer. Can you identify the مبتدا in the خبر of this اسميه sentence? هذه is the مبتدا and جر مجرور لبنتي is the خبر شبه جملة. Notice بنتي is also coming as مضاف and الفلاحي is مضاف إليه. الدجاجة here is functioning as بدل for هذه. The next part is about الساعة. So our question will be لمن هذه الساعة? Whose is this watch? And based on the hint, the answer should be هذه الساعة لبن المدير. This watch belongs to the son of the principal. This response sentence is very similar in structure to the response in part 7. Part 9. البيت. So the question should be لمن هذا البيت? Whose is this house? And the answer is هذا البيت للطبيب. This house belongs to the doctor. And the final part is about الملعقة. So we will ask لمن هذه الملعقة? Whose is this spoon? We are going with هذه here because الملعقة is مؤنث. How should we respond to this question? هذه الملعقة للطالب. This spoon belongs to the student. هذه الملعقة للطالب. We are done with this exercise. Before we finish this video, I would like you to take a note of the difference between these two questions. لمن هذا البيت؟ بيت من هذا؟ The first question, لمن هذا البيت؟ literally translates to English as whose is this house? Here, البيت is coming as بدل for هذا. The second question, بيت من هذا؟ can be translated as whose house is this? Here, baytu man is the idhafa combination. So, baytu is mudaf in the second question. Although there is no big difference in the meaning of these questions, it's good to observe this structural difference. In particular, the function that the ism al-baytu is playing in these two sentences. Let's end our video here. We'll continue going through the rest of the lesson in the next couple of videos, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.